so every year at CVS, at, at CVS, at CES, there seems to be a theme that comes out. And not surprisingly, at least for me, this year the, se the theme seems to be connected. Everything is connected. There's connected cars, there's connected fridges, which I'll talk about actually in terms of MasterCard a little bit later. I even found out this morning when reading an article in payments.com that L'Oreal came out with a connected hairbrush. <laughs> yes, you can take a hairbrush and connect it to an app on your phone and when you brush your hair, it recommends products by one of their brands that you can use to make your hair all nice and shiny. So at MasterCard, we are obviously very excited that people, you know, there's more of these connected products and people can use their MasterCard cards to buy these products. But what we're even more excited about is the possibility that these connected products hold in order to make digital payments scale more quickly and to enable seamless, amazing, priceless um, payment experiences. So digital payments aren't exactly a new thing. Um, if any of you are, most of you I think are probably as old as I am or maybe at least as old, I hope. Hope, hopefully not as old as I am, but you remember buying um, ringtones on your mobile phone back in even 2004. So that was a first example of mobile payment, kind of a rudimentary example. Not exactly an example that was really scalable because those sorts of closed loop mobile payment systems didn't allow people to leave their homes um, every day like without their cards or their wallets, right? But then something really amazing happened about two and a half years ago. So as all of you in this room probably know, um, you know, MasterCard, Visa, Amex got together and we created this amazing new system called tokenization that allowed mobile payments basically to scale and become real. So instead of little science projects, we were able to enable Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Android Pay, Microsoft Wallet, MasterPass, and many other wallets you know, to really come into being. Um, sorry, so I lost my place. So what's really, though, exciting to us about what's going on right now isn't about, you know, the, the foundation that we created was necessary, um, but what's really exciting about it is where it's going to allow us to go next. Um, you know, the connectivity that we're seeing all over the place and where I started earlier, you know, all of this, this expansion of connected everything, it's allowing us to take this mobile payment experience into all new environments, into connected home, into retail, into municipal and commercial applications. According to Cisco, more than 50 billion connected uh, devices will be in the world by 2020. The line between online and offline is progressively being obliterated, and almost everything can now be intelligently connected. This Internet of Things is evolving rapidly, and with it, consumers are more connected than ever before. And they have a really large voice in the way that all of this is going to evolve. That's really powerful. From your dishwasher um, ordering its own detergent refills to your self-driving car paying for its own parking, the ability to make things more integrated and more seamless is right in front of us. And it's our job to figure out how to make this work. Not just the benefits, but also, and I think most importantly, how are we gonna mitigate the risks that come with all of this connectivity, while at the same time delivering an amazing consumer experience? So today I want to share some of these exciting digital trends that we're seeing, some foundational principles that we think are extremely important and critical in order for digital payments to scale, um, and then talk about some really interesting innovations that MasterCard is leading the charge on. So the explosion of connectivity leads to tremendous complexity. And it's our job to eliminate this. One of the strongest signals we see from our consumer research is the desire for it to be easy and, for, and to just work together. My mom doesn't want to be the system admin for her toaster. The services we deliver to these new ecosystems can't be beyond the comprehension of the consumers, merchants, and small businesses that they're meant to serve. Instead, we need to stick to first principles that give the consumer the confidence paying, 
confidence that they're paying with their MasterCard. They have to believe that their transaction is safe and secure and that their personal information is being protected. And most importantly, we have to give the consumer the confidence that, tr that the transaction is going to work, even if it's taking place in a brand new commerce environment that they've never experienced before. So at MasterCard, we've been busy creating and se setting out some really important foundational principles that are going to work, that we hope work toward eliminating this complexity. So first, security. So this is a really foundational principle, and it's kind of where I started, that the way that all of this got started and the way that we started moving toward a scalable environment was through tokenization. So tokenization basically provides EMV level security to all of these transactions, right? So for those of you in the room who perhaps don't, don't know, what tokenization does is it replaces a real card number with a surrogate card number, a different PAN, and we provision that together with a set of cryptographic keys um, that every time the transaction, every time a transaction happens, a unique code is created that only the network or sometimes the issuer um, can unlock. So that means that if the data is compromised, if someone you know, you know, uh, sniffs data off of my mobile phone or off my Ringly Ring, or you know, there's somehow otherwise a compromise, that data is useless. This is really important. It's a, it was, again, I, we, we at MasterCard believe that all um, of these digital transactions must be tokenized. We think it's the key to give com, you know, consumers and merchants uh, and other ecosystem participants, and in particular governments, um, the confidence that we need to have their backing for all of this to scale. So second is something that we call transparency. So what's transparency? Consumers need to understand, no matter whether they're in a regular commerce environment, like they're you know, regular, you know, doing a transaction on a website, in-app, um, or at a store, or whether it's in a new commerce environment, like some of the ones we'll talk about a little bit later, the consumer needs to understand what it is they're making the payment with. They need to understand that they're making their payment with the genuine MasterCard card that comes with all the rights and protections that they come to expect from MasterCard or from their card issuer. Things like ID theft protection, warranty, extended warranty and price protection, rewards programs for their issue, from their issuer, um, and stuff like that. This is gonna lead to ubiquity. That's why transparency is so important. We need to give consumers confidence that they can you know, use their card and transact in all of these new environments um, confidently. And the way that that's gonna happen is by you know, us in the ecosystem making sure that we're providing them transparency. What does that really mean? It means that the consumer should know at every important point during the transaction journey that they're using their MasterCard card or they're using their card from their issuer. Sometimes one is actually more important than the other. But we wanna give the consumer that confidence that they can transact safely and securely and it's gonna be the same for them transacting digitally than it is if they're using their plastic card. So the next is accessibility. This is actually the wrong slide, so I'm just going to go to privacy, but I'll, I'm going to talk about accessibility. So what is accessibility? A consumer also should know that once they digitize their MasterCard card, they should be able to use that card wherever they see the digital representation of MasterCard. For MasterCard, that means MasterPass. So what does this mean in real life? So our recent announcement at Money 2020 that Samsung Pay, Android Pay, and Microsoft Wallet are all going to be leveraging the MasterPass acceptance network. For those of you who may not know, MasterPass is MasterCard's digital acceptance network. Unlike all of our competitors, we have a philosophy, we have had a philosophy and then we built a system where we have many wallets connect into one acceptance network. So for example, Citi, Citibank has a wallet, CityPay, Capital One, Bank of America, Fifth Third, SunTrust, a whole bunch of others. So all of those banks, they have their own wallets where consumers you know, keep their, their digital credentials and they can pay with their bank. But similarly, you know, we believe in consumer choice. Consumers should be able to put their card into any digital wallet that is you know, safe and secure and that actually adheres to any of these principles. And so, um, and so in order to bring this you know, concept of accessibility to life, 
we partnered with, again, those, those three um, wallets. And now anytime you digitize a MasterCard card, you know, coming in the spring into any of those environments, you'll also be able to use that card wherever MasterPass is accepted. Again, this creates confidence and leads to the ubiqui ubiquity that we'll need, again, to then later move these concepts into, the, into like the new environments that we're gonna talk about shortly. So the last is privacy. So with all of these connected, with all of these connections, we actually all of a sudden have access to a treasure trove of new data. This is actually an amazing thing. We could use this data to bring amazing consumer experiences, right, to cardholders. We could also use this data to bring amazing insights to merchants. But in order to give confidence to all of these members of the ecosystem, we have to have a certain set of ground rules, right, that what we're not gonna do is use the data in ways that we haven't told the consumer or gotten permission from the consumer or the merchant for that matter, that we're gonna do that. And so in order for all of this, in order for the promise of the, you know, the connectivity and all of the data that it brings to really be brought to life and for the goodness to be brought to bear for the consumer, for the merchant and the other ecosystem participants, we have to all agree to adhere to this principle of privacy. So ensuring that data and personal info from digital devices is used only, you know, solely for its intended purposes. And so with these foundational principles behind us, where are we, where are we now? Where are we going next? What are we doing with all of this stuff? Um, and where do we go after these initial mobile wallets launched and the initial uses of, you know, tokens in, you know, the most obvious place that we thought to put them, phones? So, one, a first example, and a first really obvious example, is something that we introduced last year, is a, a program that we have at Master called, Card called Commerce for Every Device. So right now I'm wearing a Ringly Ring. This is a Ringly Ring. I wear my Ringly Ring all the time because it's functional and beautiful. Um, I use it, it connects to my phone, it tells me when I have a text message. I'm a working mom, so you know, I have mine set to when it flashes you know, red and it you know, jiggles on my finger, I know that that's my nanny texting me and I should probably, you know, not, you know, even though it's a little bit rude, I should probably turn over my phone during my meeting and, and take a look at the text because it's important. Um, so what we're doing though, this is something I wear anyway. I wear it every day, right? And similarly, a lot of people wear fitness bands, they wear smart watches. So one of the things that we've been doing is working with ecosystem participants, including um, companies like FitPay, to connect into MDES, so MDES is our tokenization platform, MasterCard's platform, and make the same secure tokenized, you know, um, secured with cryptogram, you know, type EMV-like security credentials available, not only in the mobile wallets we've been talking about up until now, but also in these other environments. So in, in these other safe, secure um, locations, like for example, this Ringly Ring, or lots of other, um, important wearables that you'll hear about later this year. So another thing that we've been working on that's a really kind of obvious next step is unattended retail. And I heard people talking about that at the end of the last um, panel. So, you know, there are about 25 million, 25 million, I think, or 35 million uh, vending machines around the world, and 90% of them are not card enabled. So think about what, of a, pain, what a pain that is, right? So, it seems so ridiculous in today's day and age that, that at 90% at of vending machines, you have to have coins or cash with you in order to actually buy a drink, like a water or a soda. And then also think about what a pain that is on the, on the distribution side for the, you know, for the vending machine operators, for the beverage manufacturers. They have to you know, go through all the cost and expense of having collecting that money, collecting that um, cash, keeping it safe and secure, dealing with all the loss that comes, you know, for, along the way between the, you know, various points that that cash passes through. So what we've done is created an app where the app connects to the vending machines. We're actually working right now, I can't name names, but a couple of really important large be beverage manufacturers to equip many, many vending machines in the U.S. What? Oh, I'm not, I'm not allowed to say. But with, with a, to equip many of these vending machines with the capability to make a payment from an app, it's actually an, an app that we have called, that, called Quicker, that's part of our MasterPass platform, um, that does actually has a lot of other use cases. But for this one, 
the, the app connects to the vending machine, and then you just pay seamlessly with MasterPass with credentials that you already have stored in your, you know, in your handheld device, and then out pops a soda. So you can actually come to our booth um, at Master. We actually have this on display at the at the Mastercard booth, and you could see it. So these are two sort of these were like very obvious next steps for us and extensions of our MDES on our MasterPass platform. But now is where we're getting to the more exciting stuff. So where are we going next? So last year at CES, we did we announced a partnership with Samsung where we enable an app called Groceries by MasterPass on their Samsung Family Hub fridge. So what this does is it allows um, a consumer from the comfort of their own home in their kitchen to add items to a grocery list that's in this app. And what's really interesting about the app and about the commerce platform that we base the app on is that it connects and allows search through multiple merchants. So right now, Fresh Direct, Peapod, and ShopRite are all connected into the fridge. And so from, your, um, you know, from the comfort of your own home, let's say you know, I live in the New York area. Maybe there's two feet of snow outside. It's freezing. I have a small child at home. I realize there's no milk. We actually have just also voice activated this. So you can talk to the refrigerator and say, fridge, please buy me milk. And it could say, Sherry, what kind of milk? And I'll say the same kind that I bought last time, or buy it from Fresh Direct, or buy it from ShopRite, or buy it from Peapod, and, or, or this time make it lactate, any of that stuff. So what it does it, is it enables me to you know, make this purchase really seamlessly and easily from my own home, and I can check out with MasterPass, naturally. Um, and also what's great is that this, this app was actually also, this whole, this Groceries by MasterCard was actually given a, um, a CES 2017 Innovation Award, which we're really proud of. Um, so what we're also then doing is extending this same technology into the car. So now we've moved from the home to the car, and we have a partnership um, also recently announced with General Motors um, and with IBM, Watson, where we're gonna be working with Watson's you know, AI type technology um, and GM, obviously, they're a very large car maker and one of our longtime partners. We, um, we do their co-brand card. And what we're going to be doing is enabling the same kind of multi-merchant voice-activated search type experience in the car. So you'll be able to do things like, say, my car's name is Heidi Klum. So I say, Heidi, I, I, uh, you know, I'm commuting to work today all the way from Westport, Connecticut to purchase, which isn't really that long, but I'd like to, I'd like to order an audiobook. Can you recommend a few audiobooks for me that are going to be made into movies later this year? And then you go back and forth, and then one of our MasterPass connected merchants, perhaps Barnes and Noble, perhaps another uh, merchant that sells books, you know, will we could you know go through the search? What? She said, is there one? Oh. No, but we could, we, you know, it'll, it'll go through the search process, recommend books to me, and then through voice authentication, I'll be able to check out and seamlessly download my book and then start listening to it on my way to work. There's a whole bunch of other, like, obviously great applications that we're working on with GM and IBM that you'll see come live, um, at least in pilot form later this year, including things like parking, fuel, order ahead with food. Um, we're even working on delivery to the car, um, so leveraging on the whole idea of delivery you know, to your home through the fridge. Sometimes you're in your parking lot after work, and it would be great if somebody delivered things to your car so that you can then just drive home, that sort of thing. So another key trend that we're seeing um, is contextual commerce. So consumers don't really want to leave the environment they're in in order to make purchases, right? And we, and we want to meet the consumer where they want to be. And actually, that's been a theme, if you can see, with the wearables, the connected car, the connected home. We want to meet the consumer where they are and make it really easy and simple for them to make transactions without leaving their, you know, their, their environment that they're in. And people love chatbots. People love to text. They're, they're really easy. They provide a lot of information. They also allow the business to, to actually create, you know, to use AI to create great responses for consumers. And so we've actually built a chatbot. Um, we've built a bunch of chatbots, but I'm going to show you an example right now, a quick example of a chatbot that allows you to book a flight.
if I can get it to play. If I can't help, I will book a flight. I don't know what it's doing. I'm sorry. I think it's going. It's stepping through. Yeah. No, but it's a it's, it's a it's a video. Oh well. I mean, it's it normally has sound. Okay, we'll skip this one. Anyway, it allows you to, it allows you through through um, a ch you know chatbot to connect with an airline and within the app, to, you know, with within the chat, actually purchase. Um, actually purchase the flight. You can say, I want to fly from New York to Sydney. What are my options? Blah, blah, blah. It'll return you back, you know, the options. And then you can say, let me check out with my master pass. And, and it's amazing. And it just works. So one of the most new exciting also trends that we're seeing, and I'm out of time, so this will be my last, my last little innovation that I'm going to show you. Um, is AI. And we think AI is another really important trend that's also here to stay. That can also be really helpful not only to consumers but also to businesses. So this kind of builds on the unattended retail thing. This is more like the augmented retail thing. So we don't think that robots are necessarily going to replace humans. I personally am not rooting for that at all. Um, but instead, it could really augment the, you know, the, the purchasing experience. And so we have a partnership with SoftBank um, and with Yum! Brands. And in Asia right now, they're actually rolling out and testing yeah, at Pizza Hut um, you know, a, a greeter. Either Actually, both we're testing both greeters, robots as greeters, and also robots as, um, you know, as actual checkout mechanisms. And so if I could get this video to play, this, it's really... Hi, Peppa. I'm hungry. Hello. Delighted to have you in MasterCard Cafe. I'm at your service. Please pair with your MasterPass wallet and start ordering. Nice to meet you, Veronica. What would you like to order? Can I have a beef burger? Sure. Two fries. Regular or large? Large. All right. Anything else? Orange juice. Sure. That's all. Great. We have a promotion today. You get one cheesecake for $2. Would you like to add it? How many calories? Each cheesecake contains 90 calories, 3 grams of fat, 2 grams of carbs, and 6 grams of protein. Would you like to have it? Okay, I'll have it. Great. The total amount is $23.50. It will be charged to your card ending 9372. Please say approve to authorize the transaction. Approve. Cool. I am processing your transaction now. Your transaction is completed. Please collect your meal at the counter. Enjoy. Thanks, Beppo. So you can expect more of that coming from MasterCard soon. We re we're really playing around a lot with AI. We think that there's a lot of interesting things that we could do with it. Not only, also SoftBank came out this morning with some stats. They've been testing Pepper on the West Coast. Um, they, were, they were able to not only see in certain stores between 30 and 70% lift in foot traffic, but there was a, there's a t-shirt shop on the, US, on the USC campus that during the time Pepper was a greeter, saw a 300% increase in revenue. So, you know, we, we think that this has a lot of, you know, potential to really help our merchants um, like add some pizzazz to stores. We think that retail, you know, obviously with retail same-store sales being down so much and digital being up, we think that, you know, we want to do our part in helping our merchants bring interesting innovations into the retail store, which is something that you'll also be hearing a lot about, like, later on this year from MasterCard and from my team. So we're really excited about the year to come, and thanks so much. <laughs>